Hallelujah. All I am is yours. Glory to God. That's consecration. I don't belong to myself anymore. It's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives within me. The life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And as the Apostle Paul said, I'm a bond servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. I was a slave to sin. He gave me my life. And I love him so much, I gave, me my, I gave my life back to him. I'm a bond servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't belong to myself. Bond with a price. Hallelujah. Let's just go, I'll tell you, let's go ahead and just tune up for a minute. Just pray, pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in other tongues. If you don't pray in other tongues, that's all right. Just say, Lord, I receive now. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Open your mouth and let the Spirit of God give you a language and begin to speak. Nelly Gutzor, Manjangre, Sifar, Matar, and Deska, East to go. Nelly Vidu, so prova, so crochet, prophet, sat, skate, skate, skaran, name, and so to go. We the Mandangle, Sivisco, we left the press of the falls of Beranskini, and we left the press of the sons of Miranda, Galeche, prophet, skates to go. And we left the Sosor, Minaro, Vodori, Pachapre, Gede, Galasinini. And so the breath of all remananda, paraka to furubu, lakorde, keka, lunch, and jaira, bitu, brage, palastake. No remanan yet a pascalace to vedes palate. No remananda gales to go. Marividanda gales suits gales to go. Marividam roscalos to kere felan menes to go. Pachinista melande. No reminar remanan shkede braduska la fala baratska los to go. Nelegadoskalostaka, <laughs> And Hallelujah. Glory to God. And as the clouds of heaven, the glory of his presence, the manifestation of his glory, as the clouds of heaven began to gather and build up momentum for a great invasion of the planet Earth, the church prepares herself to run a last and final race. Power of God will show up manifest in unusual ways. The glory is going to fall upon this nation and many others. It'll be a, a, available to one and it'll be available to all. And the great days are just ahead. The greatest days of the church. The greatest days of the kingdom of God upon the earth are just out, just ahead. And in the past, there have been moves of the evangelist. And there have been moves of evangelism. And there have been moves of the teaching ministry. And there have been moves even of the prophet's ministry. But in the move to come, there will be a great outreach and a great flow of an apostolic move. Then there shall be an apostolic flow into the nations of the earth. And they'll begin to plow ground and plant seed and produce mighty things. And because that gift will rise to the surface and much shall be done. Oh, yes, there will rise up the false, just as there has false prophets, false teachers, false evangelists. 
Oh, yeah, but there will be the real. And it will be so easy to determine the difference between the real and the self-appointed and self-anointed. And that move, that mighty move, that gift shall rise up and flow to the surface. And there will be many that will be like David's out tending sheep. And, and suddenly they will be brought to the forefront. And they will be launched out into nations. And a mighty work shall be done. And there are nations that have been so, so unreached up till now. And that gift will begin to plow ground and plant seed. And the move of God will step into those nations and mighty things shall be done. And uh, churches shall be raised up here and churches shall be raised up there. And it'll suddenly look like popcorn. It'll be one popping here and popping there and another popping here and one popping there and one popping here and one popping there and one popping here and one popping there. And it'll be like popcorn. And there'll be my, there will be churches of the Spirit, the Word and the Spirit. It'll be raised up here and raised up there, and suddenly it'll just seem like they're being raised up everywhere. And that gift will be coming to its fullest flow in a 2,000-year period. And mighty things shall be done, and truly the signs of an apostle shall be wrought among you, and all patience with signs, wonders, and mighty deeds. The last day church will be a supernatural church. And the things that deny the supernatural will fall by the wayside. And the things that argue with the supernatural will fall by the wayside. And the things that deny and defy the supernatural will fall by the wayside. And the truth shall rise to the surface. And a mighty work shall be done. And a mighty race shall be run. And many, 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 many multitudes of souls shall be won. <laughs> For the best is just ahead. So don't hang down your head and throw in the towel and quit. This is time to lift up your head and rejoice for your redemption does draw nigh. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We thank you, Lord. And we believe it. Oh, but it'll not, it'll go far beyond that. For there are those that are called to the office of the evangelist, the prophet, the pastor, and the teacher. And they'll step into realms of those four gifts almost never seen before. Rising to the fullness of those places. Operating in the Word and the Holy Ghost as they run their races. But even beyond that, it's time for the church to step into her places. The body of Christ. For the ministry... The fivefold ministry will equip the saints, and the saints will begin to run a race like never seen before. And there will be believers going here and going there and going here and going there, and they're going to operate in the power of God, and they're going to go places the fivefold ministry can't get to, but that's their job is to go. And they'll see signs, and they'll see wonders, and they'll see healings too, and working in miracles they'll find themselves ready to do. Great things will take place through the body of Christ. So never discount that which is on your life. But lift up your head, lift up your hands and rejoice because the best is yet ahead for you because you're going to be able to step out and do the things you've seen yourself do. The longings that are in your heart, soon those will begin to start. So it's not time to give up and quit and say, I'm going another way. No, now you're coming into the church's best day. <laughs> and there will be those. And there will be those with what's called a ministry of giving, a ministry of liberality. And there'll be those that'll suddenly, it'll just seem like everything they do works right. It'll seem like no matter what they do, it makes money. And they'll be Holy Ghost led, not manipulated, not coerced. No, they'll be Holy Ghost led. They'll know what to sow, where to sow, when to sow. And the more they sow, the more they'll grow. And the finances shall come into Holy Ghost churches in the days to come. Holy Ghost ministries the days to come. Places where the power of God is respected and revered. Places where the Holy Ghost is honored. Those places, finances will flow from here and from there. It seem like it'll flow from everywhere. There will be no lack. There will be no turning back. Every believer will be able to give. Every believer will do their job. But there will be those that will step into a place in unusual grace and it'll seem like sometimes they can't even count the finances that have come in and through their hands that they know to sow it to the right place. So the days are here upon us and about to grow real quickly in the days ahead. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the church will be like a sleeping giant being raised from the dead. Hallelujah. So Lord, we give you thanks. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord. We get to live in the church's best days. 
<coughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, let's give him thanks. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God. I believe it. I believe it. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Jamie, what'd you do to your knee? Did you pull something? To hurt? It does? Does it hurt right now? Check it again. Now, I'm not wanting you to lie. I'm just asking you. <laughs> Check it again. What's happening with the pain? Is it totally the same? Is it different? It's, yeah, okay. Same, a little bit less. It's still there. Okay. Hallelujah. That's all right. I'm just checking. I'm just fishing. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for a supernaturally speedy recovery there. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. So fast it'll surprise everybody. We ask you for that, and we thank you for it in the wonderful name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Well, let's all give him thanks. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, now, Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for the holy written word. Father, we're never going to go out beyond your word. We'll never go further than your word. We'll never get more accomplished than our knowledge of your word. For we know from your word. That your people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Not a lack of faith. Not a lack of power. But for a lack of knowledge. You said your people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. So Father, thank you for the Holy Ghost. The one who causes uh, us to in, uh, enjoy and understand your word. We trust him to give us utterance and understanding today. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Well, you can be seated. <coughs> Hallelujah. And we're going to start tonight with um, James, the fifth chapter. James, the fifth chapter. And uh, we're going to kind of stay on the subject here that we've been on. Um, you know, the Bible said over in First Thess Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, said, uh, uh, in the God of peace, sanctify you wholly. I pray God, your whole spirit, soul, body be preserved, blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if you back up a few verses before that, he's given instructions to the church. And one of them is he said to pray without ceasing. Yes. Well, you can't pray without ceasing, you know, as far as we would understand that. Because that means praying 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. You'd last a couple weeks and then just fall over dead praying. You can't, you got to sleep sometime. You got to eat sometime. You know, there's certain things. You know, so he can't mean pray being verbally praying 24-7. But he, he means never give up on prayer. Stay in an attitude of prayer. If you wake up at night, just happen to wake up at night, you know, stay in an attitude of prayer. It doesn't mean you have to intercede for an hour. It just means you might just go, thank you, Jesus, glory to God, hallelujah, you're so good to me. We've been around ministers before. We've been around older ministers, older ministers that, that uh, uh, left in a blaze of glory, didn't go out as failures, went out in a blaze of glory when they did go, but you get around them and, and uh, you know, They'd be just, you know, riding in the car, and all of a sudden, you know, you just, things are kind of quiet, and you could hear them whispering, thank you, Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, you're so good. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, they're praying. Praise is the highest kind of prayer. So now, um, uh, there's just something, you know, there's never been any such thing as a, a major move of God. In fact, I don't think any kind of a move of God. Never been any such thing as a move of God that wasn't preceded by prayer. There's no shortcut. If you think you found one, give up ahead of time. It's not going to work. No such thing. You can't, you're not going to, you're not going to go beyond, um, you, you know, best example is, is we've got these thermostats on the wall over here and we've got these big units up on the roof and they, they control the heat and the air conditioning and, you know, and, and, and these units, they can keep it warm in the winter. They can keep it cool in the summer. They, they can cool this, this room down to where it gets just downright chilly, you know? Uh, we, can, we can heat the foyer out there until you just about cook you. And it's got these units on the roof, but uh, 
they'll just sit there and do nothing until you set those thermostats. A little box on the wall over there controls how hot or how cold those units produce to. They're, they're, they, set, they set the temperature. What we'll find in, not only in our own personal lives, but in, in a move of God and in revivals, we got something that'll set the temperature. Amen. The power of God's available, but something's got to set the temperature, and that's going to be the prayers of the saints. John G. Lake made a statement when he went to, a, took his family, moved to South Africa, whoa, back around the turn of the last century. And, uh, you know, he got there and he went up outside Johannesburg. He was up on a hill out there and he's looking out there and uh, looking out over these thousands of villages out across the countryside. And um, he, uh, he's looking at all these villages. He's just arrived a little while back in South Africa. He knew God had sent him there. And he's just, his heart's just being pulled to the, the, the people of that nation. And he's sitting there, he's just going, God, how, God, how, how are we going to reach these people? How, we're, how do we reach these people? I'm, as far as you can see, thousands of villages. How, how do you reach a nation like that? He said, uh, uh, the Holy Ghost spoke to him, said the church which is his body. He said, well, Lord, I know that. I understand that. I know that's in the scripture, the church which is your body. He said, but how are we going to reach these people? He said, again, he heard the church which is his body. He said, Lord, I know that. I, I, under, I understand that from the scriptures. He said again, the church which is his body. And all of a sudden he said, I, I understood what he was saying. Is it, It's up to the church to make the difference. And he said, I realized there was a river down here. And upstream there's a, there was a, a dam that had been built and a power plant that had been built there. And because the water would run past that, uh, over that dam and, and produce the power there out of that generator. And it would send electricity down all those wires to all those villages. And because, because there was something up there that was taking power out of the atmosphere and generating it and running it down those wires, because something up there did that, you could have electricity and lights to all these thousands of villages. Then he said, I began to realize the only way to reach all these villages was that power plant to work. And the only way we're going to reach them with the gospel is for the church to do its job, which is the body, and that's to pray. We are the generators that will do our job, and through prayer we pull power out of the very atmosphere of heaven, and we send it down the wires to the, to the world. But there's no use going to the world if we haven't prayed our way through there first. No use trying to have a move of God in a nation if we haven't done our homework. If we haven't bombed the beaches, there's no use invading the land, okay? Any military assignment knows you don't just go land and see if you can take something. You have a strategy to go in there, and you bomb the beaches, and you, then you send, some, then you send some, uh, 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 some special forces in there to, to build some, some fire bases behind enemy lines, and you get some places set up. It's, there's a strategy there, but you, you don't invade until you bomb the beaches so you got somewhere to land. And prayer is what bombs the beaches. Yeah. Hallelujah. But anyway, have you found James 5 yet? James, the fifth chapter, and verse 14, <clears throat> James says here, by the Holy Ghost, he said, is there any sick among you? Boy, <laughs> let me back up. I got the wrong verse here. I wanted to start earlier. Verse 13, is any among you afflicted? Now, I'm not talking about being sick. You know, is any among you afflicted? Does that mean you got sickness? No, no, because later on he said, is there any sick among you? So I wanted to start earlier here. He said, is there any among you afflicted? Afflicted means tempted, tested, or tried. Yeah, no, that's, is there any tempted, tested, or tried? Yeah. Today we'd say, is there any that's not tempted, <laughs> tested, or tried? Okay. Is there any among you afflicted? Is there any among you afflicted? Let him call for 18 hours of counseling appointments and see if we can just talk you out of it. Uh, no, there's nothing wrong with counseling if it's Bible. Amen. Nothing wrong with that. But you know, why, why, why go that far if we don't do God's first instructions first? Amen. You know, really the best counseling appointments would be to get folks to get on their knees and pray for 30 minutes and then start talking the scriptures. After 30 minutes, they probably wouldn't need it. But anyway, that always goes over big. But now, is any among you afflicted? Let, let him call a prayer group together to pray him out of it. No situation heard of a number of months ago where somebody was, you know, very severely attacked in, in their life and, and they're all, they're, they kept saying, why, why isn't there somebody praying me out of this? Why isn't there somebody praying me out of this? It wasn't anybody I knew as the situation I knew about. And I thought, 
that's, that's a good question. I understand there are places for that, but sometimes it's easy to say, why isn't somebody praying me out of this when what we ought to be saying is, God, how can I pray me out of this? Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Lock the doors. We're, gonna get, we're, we're moving on here. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. See, when you're happy, you don't go to somebody and go, I'm so happy I can hardly stand it. Would you sing for me? Well, I might do that. Like somebody said one time, I was believing God for a good voice to sing, and I finally figured out it was easier to believe God for a wife that had one. That's what I did. <laughs> no. If, you know, if, you're, if you're happy, you're joyful, you know, you got a you, you know, you, you praise in your voice. You, you don't go, I am so happy and hardly stand it. But, you know, would you praise God for me? You're not going to have somebody praise God for you. If you are that, man, you, you are pumped. Things are going well. You're going to go get out of my way. Man, I am, I, my joy level is just overflowing right now. I'm going to praise my... See, is any, is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. See, him's got to do something. Doesn't him? Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is there, now, is there any sick? Verse 14. Any sick among you... Is there any sick? Now, again, isn't that interesting? Back here a couple thousand years ago, James is writing, and he said, is there any sick among you, you being the church? You wouldn't write that to a church today. Is there anybody sick in your church? Uh, probably. Okay. Is there any? Now, I like this. So he said, is there any sick among you? And, and somebody once said, and we don't really know for sure. I don't know the original language. I don't know the intent here. But somebody made the statement once that it appears to be him saying, is any sick among you or is there anybody that's sick beyond the, the place where they're, abil- they're, they're not able to get help themselves? In other words, I've done everything I know to do and I just need some assistance. I need somebody to get behind and push. I need somebody to take me by the arms and help me get through this. You ever been there? You just, you just thought, man, if somebody could just hook up and help me with this thing. So what he's saying is, any among you afflicted, let him pray. Is any merry, let him sing psalms. Any sick among you, let him, let, well, what should him do? Okay, call for the elders of the church. Let them, pray, let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he's committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Now, you could teach on that for six months. But, but isn't it interesting when he starts out, he said, is any among you afflicted, let him Pray, any merry, let him sing psalms. Any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer, prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he's, forgetted, if he's committed sins, they shall be forgiven. And then he goes on after that, and he says, um, confess your faults one to another. Pray you one for another. Confess your, he, he, he's stuck on this one term. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Or as the Amplified said, the fervent, effectual, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man availeth much. You know, in those few verses, he's mentioned one word a lot, and he's talking to the church, and he's talking about living in the church age, which is where you and I are. We're just, they were at the beginning of it, we're at the end of it, but the truth doesn't change. If you're afflicted, pray. If you're sick, call for the elders, let them pray. The, 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 the fervent, effectual prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available. Confess your faults one to another, that ye may be healed. Okay? And then he says, the, the fervent, uh, get the right verse here. Confess your faults one to another, pray you one for another that you may be healed. The fervent, effectual, heartfelt, continued prayer. He keeps talking about prayer in here. Uh, but isn't it interesting there in the, what, 15th verse where he says, uh, the fervent, effectual, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man. Oh, I'm so glad he put that in there. We could stay there for a while, too. I'm telling you, righteous isn't what we earn. It's not what we do. Righteous is what we are. Holy is what I do. Righteous is what I are. I'm never going to get any more righteous than I was when I was born again. My holiness needed some work. I'm sure yours never has. But the minute I got born again, I, I went from unrighteousness, my righteousness was as filthy rags, and in a moment's time, suddenly, I'm, I've been made the righteousness of God in Christ. So the minute I got born again, God put me into a standing where God's looked at me as if I never made a mistake in my life. He sees me through the blood of Jesus. Jesus is my big brother. God looks at me like I've never sinned because that new creature never has. So... So we can see back there the fervent, effectual, heartfelt, continued prayer of a 
righteous person makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. But if you notice, he puts these terms together. Prayer makes tremendous power available. The church which is his body. Reaching a thousand villages, but you've got to have a power generator back here. We've got 7.2 billion souls on the earth. Got to have a power generator. Heaven's got lots of power. God just needs somebody to turn the crank on that thing and pull it out of heaven and distribute it on the earth. How do we do that, prayer? Prayer should not be a boring service. Prayer ought to be the most exciting service we have. Prayer shouldn't be a drudgery. It ought to be a joy. And if we get to where the prayer is Holy Ghost led, it suddenly becomes fun. But you can't separate power from prayer. You can't separate prayer from power. We're not going to have the power of God like God wants us to have it without prayer. Now, it's not going to be the entire body of Christ because the, if the body's doing its job, we're going to grow every day and you're going to have brand new babies coming in the family every minute and they're going to have to learn about prayer. So, you know, it's not necessarily going to be the entire body of Christ praying, but if the ones that know the difference will pray. And again, we, we, we don't want to make prayer a legalistic thing. Oh, I'll tell you, you got to pray an hour or no use praying. Man, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm glad I don't have to live that way. Smith Wigglesworth made the statement. Somebody asked him about prayer, his prayer life. Anybody that's had 23 people raised from the dead is doing something right. That's some power available. Somebody asked Smith Wigglesworth one time about his prayer life. He said, well, he said, when I started out, he said, I, I uh, prayed long seasons of prayer. But now that I'm, you know, along further in ministry, he said, and I've got my tools sharpened a little bit. He said, I never pray more than 20 minutes at a time. But I never go more than 20 minutes without praying. So he learned to take it from a regimented hour a day to a life of prayer. And that's what it really ought to be. And, and, and as we grow, we develop that where it doesn't have to be an hour. It should be a, a constant consciousness of God. Okay? That's the way it ought to be. So it takes the legalism out of it. Ah, I just can't pray an hour. You don't have to pray an hour. I'm just, you know, I do eight minutes and I'm shot, man. I'm telling you, I am done after eight minutes. Well, then give eight minutes everything you got. You know, I think God would be happier with eight-minute conversation than nothing at all. So I think God would take a 30-second, you know, hi, God, I love you, I praise you, I thank you, and I'm going to pray in tongues now for the next eight minutes or eight seconds. Or I think God would appreciate the communion and communication from his church, even if you don't have an hour to give. And, you know, sometimes you get an unction to pray. Sometimes you think about something. You get an unction to pray, and you look at your watch and go, man, I just haven't got enough time to pray right now. Do you know God wouldn't unction you to pray if you didn't have enough to, time to pray about what he's given you to pray about? You know, Almighty God knows that you've only got 2.5 minutes, and he apparently knows that you can get to heaven and back in 2.5 minutes, or he wouldn't stir you to pray like that. Man, we need to put joy back in, take legalism out of this thing, where, where prayer can be a joy again. Because there's a move of God. <laughs> there's a whoo, and skinangli, staparastic, and needs to go. And the wind, it used to be a drudgery, and it used to be a pain, and it used to be so hard and difficult. The church will rise up now and step into a place in the Holy Ghost, and prayer shall become a joy and a pleasure. And there will be those that will say, I'd rather pray than eat. I'd rather pray than sleep. I'd rather pray than go out and have fun on the town. I just love to pray. I'm having such a wonderful time. And I pray it out in the morning, and I see it happen by night. And I pray it out during the week, and I see it come to pass on Sunday. And I'll tell you, I just love to pray. I love to pray more than I love anything in the world. Hallelujah. And it'll come to pass. Anyway, you can't separate prayer from power. That's what he said in there. Um, you know, for instance, look, I mean, look back over at uh, Isaiah 66. Isaiah, the 66th chapter. Isaiah's talking back here, chapter 66, verse 7. I'm not real sure where all we're headed with this tonight. We probably won't go a lot further because we're going to pray. There's unction to pray tonight. Yeah. There's unction. Has anybody else noticed that? Yeah. If you haven't, that's okay. It's all right, okay? But there's an unction to pray, so we're going to follow the unction. So I'm not going to talk a long time. I'm going to talk a little bit. We're going to pray. 
a little bit, whatever. But I just want to, again, just throw some seed out here, something for God to work with. And this is one particular truth, and I want to get this across to us. This Actually, I just got this before I walked out here tonight. This rose up on the inside. I thought we've got to get this covered tonight. Isaiah 66, verse 7, where Isaiah says, by the Holy Ghost, or you could say God says, before she, before she travailed, labored, before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was, de- before her pain came, she was delivered of a man-child. Who's heard such a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day, or shall a nation be born at once? Now the end of verse 8. For as soon as Zion, now Zion is a picture of the church. It's a type of the church. As soon as Zion, what? Went soul winning. Is that what he says? Now stick with me here. You against soul winning? No, 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 I'm absolutely for soul winning. But let's get God's pattern on this thing. It says, uh, for as soon as Zion, what? Travailed, labored. As soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. There's always going to be a connection between prayer and soul winning. Okay? Uh, I've got a, a pastor friend that, that um, we communicate a lot. And, uh, you know, over the years, he said, you know, he said, I'll, I'll go to my church and Saturday nights I'll go and I'll, I'll just spend some time. In fact, Saturday afternoon, I'll spend a lot of time praying, waiting on God. That's a great time to do it, right? The day before church. And he said, then in the evening, I'll just spend some extra time praying and waiting on God. And he said, uh, he said but there'll come times when I'll be just praying and waiting on God. And he said, uh, uh, groaning, soul travail will come on me. Okay? Now, we don't know much about that today because we left a lot of that behind because we didn't understand it. But it's coming back. Yeah. It's coming back. Not flesh produced, but by the Holy Ghost. And as it does, we're not going to abuse it, misuse it. We're going to tap into it. And it's going to produce fruit. It's in the scriptures. He said, as soon as Zion travailed, there's a groaning, there's a travail that can come, and it's, at times it does come upon people. You can't make it happen. As I've said last week, somewhere in the last week or so, I remember back in the mid-80s when some people got a little bit off, and they decided they were going to have, uh, were going to have a birthing meetings. They were going to birth the move of God. Well, you can't birth something if you're not pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> there's got to be something there. Right? And they're going, to have, they're going to have groaning meetings. Well, they groan and groan and groan and groan. and yeah, You're not going to produce something if there's not something there. In other words, the Holy Ghost has to come and give unction for that. And when he does, and we as the church yield to that, all right? Now, I'm not saying it's going to happen every time, all the time. Some folks it may never happen to. It doesn't mean it's bad, good, or indifferent. I just mean we're about to see some of that because he said as, as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. And I believe they used to say, now I, I don't, you know, I didn't say this. They used to say some of the um, old timers, all right, which is back way before my day. Um, they used to say there's a difference between conversions and births. It's easy to get people to convert to Christianity, but there's a difference between converting to Christianity and a new birth. You can get people to convert to the teachings of Jesus. You can get people to convert to the beliefs of Christianity. But I don't know about you. When I got right with God, I was born again. I didn't just convert to, you know, following the teachings of Jesus and trying to live right. Man, I couldn't do all that. Nothing worked until I was born again. And maybe there's a difference that, you know, we've got to be real cautious about that we, you know, we call everything a new birth and maybe it's a conversion but not a birth. Not my job to judge that. All I know is if the church will let the Holy Ghost move, then we're guaranteed births and not just conversions. And I've used the example before. There's an individual, that I, you know, actually a, a way distant relative that uh, contacted me years ago and, and I'd gotten saved and I went to see their whole family and and um, we talked a little bit, and, and this one uh, individual, you know, wrote to me and said, you know, I want you to know I've converted to Christianity. <laughs> really? And I thought, you know, there's nothing I could say. It was, you know, I, I thought, I don't know how to deal with this right now. I didn't have any unction to say anything. A few years later, I got another email that said, by the way, I know the difference now. I've been born again. I've made Jesus Lord of my life. I haven't just converted to Christianity. I am born again. I thought, now I know they got it. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. But anyway, this friend of mine said, 
He said, uh, specific, pretty much so, like on Sunday evenings. If there comes just, I'll be just on my face, you know, just praying, waiting on God, just, you know, laying before the Lord and waiting on God. And he said, there'll come just this, just this uh, mild travail or a groaning that'll come. And he said, every time it does, I'm guaranteed we're going to have a wonderful altar call the next morning. I know if the Holy Ghost connects with that. All right. Now, some, some of you might be going, yeah. Pastor, I have no idea what you're talking about. Don't feel bad about that. That's okay. Just stick around. I just need to get this covered. Okay? Because we're about to step into some things as the body. And I don't know about you. I'm not satisfied with the births we have in our church or in our city or in our nation. There's a wave of new births about to explode in our nation. But we're not going to get it without the church doing our job. As soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. I remember hearing years ago... Um, Pastor Jerry, you might remember hearing the same thing. You might not even remember where it was more than I would right now. I remember uh, hearing a, 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 about a, a church that uh, this church was, was growing. It was thriving. Um, they were having new births every Sunday. I mean, people legitimately getting born again. They were getting saved. They were sticking with God. They were growing in the things of God. The church was alive and growing and thriving and, and uh um, uh, and this guest minister noticed at the end of each service, especially Sunday mornings, now I'm not telling somebody to do this, all right, but there was this, this little old lady at the end of the service, everybody else is going out that way, and she'd come up and she'd lay down on the altar, and she'd just lay there and pray in other tongues. She'd just pray in other tongues, pray in other tongues, pray in, and then you could hear just quietly. I mean, not, uh, uh, not obnoxious, okay, not making a scene, you know, not being too visible, but you could just hear up there around the altar. She'd be praying, and then you could hear just a little weeping, and, and then some groaning, a little groaning, a little travail. And she'd do that, and everybody's gone. She'd get up, she'd go home. She'd do that every week. And this church is thriving. Well, this minister said, uh, he said, I, I, I was there and in the middle of that wonderful church. He said, I went there a year or two later. I don't remember what it was. And he said, church was dry. Dry, it was smaller. You know, it was just kind of dead and dry. And he said, I, I finally said to somebody I knew in the church, what, what, what happened? What's happened since I was here the last time? Said, well, I don't know exactly, but I do know this. We, uh, remember that little old lady that come down to the altar and pray at the end of the service? And, you know, she just kind of, everybody else, it's, it's, it's not out of order. It's not in the middle of the service. Everybody else is leaving. They're all heading out. They're into the foyer. It's not out of order. But she, they're all going that way, and she'd come up this way. And she'd just lay there across the altar, and she'd just pray. He said, you remember that lady? And, and, and he said, well, yeah, of course I do. He said, well, we got a new pastor. And she did that a couple Sundays. He said, he finally walked up to her and said, we'll have none of that in this church. You get up and leave with everybody else. We're not going to have any of that in this church. Well, they didn't have any of that in that church. And the church died and it dried up and they quit getting people born again. Why? For when Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Okay. Now, I'm not saying somebody needs to, at the end of every service, come up and do that. She was Holy Ghost led. Understand what I'm saying? You can do that at home. You can do that in a prayer closet. You can do that in your car. You can do it anywhere. But what I'm saying is there is a difference when the church takes our place in prayer because it makes tremendous power available, dynamic, and it's working. It works for souls. It works for souls. Soul winning is a wonderful thing, but if we're going to go out and win souls, we ought to have some prayer going before, during, and, and after. Even after folks, even after folks get... Pray a sinner's prayer, get born again. The Apostle Paul, went, uh, he wrote in Galatians, the fourth chapter, he said, My little children of whom I travail again in birth until Christ be formed in you. What he's saying is, I travailed until you came in the kingdom, and now that you're in, I'm going to keep praying. I'm not letting go of you now. I am going to be the one that pulled, uh, you know, remember Jesus with Lazarus? He came bounding out of the tomb, bound hand and foot with grave clothes. Jesus said to his disciples, loose him and let him go. So we missed it. We thought when people get saved, that'll lose themselves. Church has got the job to cut off the grave clothes, and we shouldn't be cutting them off with our tongues. <laughs> well, I tell you, I thought they got saved. I tell you, I saw them going in a bad place the other day. Well, what were you doing hanging around a bad place? <laughs> Hallelujah. We need to pray, pray 
pray for the lost to come in. Then once they come in, we need to pray for Christ to be formed in them. In other words, for them to rise up and put on the Lord Jesus Christ, put off the sin and put on the new, put off the old man, put on the new man. Hallelujah. There's, 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 uh, there's such a place in prayer. And, and, and I understand, you know, everybody's got their calling. And prayer's, prayer is not the, 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 the sixth ministry gift. All right? It's not apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, and prayer. It's not the sixth ministry gift, but I'll tell you what. Just like giving, just like praying, just like music, there's, there's an unction that God will equip people with. And some people will be given more to certain things than others. And we ought not to get jealous about that. Okay? Every believer ought to pray. There are going to be some people that are more given to that than others. And if they are, you ought to thank God for it. If you're not, that's okay. But everybody still ought to pray. But it makes tremendous power available. And, and where we're headed in the very near future, we're not going to get to the fullness of that without a move of prayer. And not everybody's going to get in, but I'm telling you, I've watched it. When, when there's a move of God about anything, people that are the least likely and are the least interested and not, I mean, just, you know, not given to that kind of whatever at all. When God breathes on something, the least likely people get in the middle of that and go, I'm telling you, I can't wait to get back. I've seen dignified stately, dignified people, you know, wouldn't be caught around a bunch of crazy, wild-eyed, Holy Ghost people. I've seen them get in a, move where the, a meeting where the Holy Ghost is there. I've seen them get just rip-roaring, drunk in the Holy Ghost, running in the building, dancing in the Holy Ghost, staggering out the back door and saying, can we do this again tomorrow night? And I'm telling you, there's something when God breathes on it, the least likely people are liable to get in. And it's that way with prayer. People are going to go, oh, I'm just not that given to prayer. I'm kind of bored with it. Trust me, the Holy Ghost can fall on you. You can hit a place in prayer where you can go, this is all I want to do. I just want to pray. I just want to pray. But what happens is you get out of the flesh into the spirit. And when you get in the spirit and begin to pray by the unction of the Holy Ghost like you haven't before, <laughs> I'm telling you what. And I'm not going to get very far, so I'm going to take another turn here anyway. Paul wrote to the... Ephesians, and he said, praying always with all prayer, all kinds of prayer, all manner of prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching there too with all perseverance and so on. Ephesians 6, 18. Paul wrote that and he said, praying always with all kinds of prayer and supplication in the spirit. All prayer is better if it's in the spirit. Yes. Yes. Prayer of faith's great, but in the flesh, it's okay. In the spirit, it works. Yes. All prayer is better. It's, it's better when it's in the spirit. And to define that, in the spirit doesn't mean that you get all glassy-eyed, run into walls, and get obnoxious. That's not what it means to be in the spirit, okay? You can get lost in the spirit. It doesn't mean you're running into walls and, and it, 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 acting squirrely. It doesn't mean all that. It just means you're more conscious of spiritual things. And my best illustration of that is, you know, you, you know sometimes you start out to pray, and you say, I'm going to pray... I'm going to pray 30 minutes. And man, you pray, you know it's been 30 minutes. You know it's been 30 minutes. But you just make the mistake of looking at your watch. It's been 2 minutes and 18 seconds. And you're going, oh man, I tell you, I knew it had been 30 minutes and I just, oh, I'm already just, I've run out. That's what you call not being in the spirit. But then there are these times when you say, I think I'm going to pray for 15, 20 minutes. I've got some time right now. I'm just going to pray. And, 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 all, and all of a sudden, man, you, you, you go, man, it's probably been 10 or 15 minutes. You look at your watch, it's been an hour and 15. Right. And you're going, and I don't want to quit now. It's, that means you're more conscious of spiritual things. You're more conscious of God than you are your watch. Yes. Yes. Being in the spirit doesn't have to be squirrely. It doesn't have to be obnoxious. Shouldn't be. But Paul wrote and talked about praying in the spirit. And there's something about that. You know, um, you know I remember I prayed. I've always loved to study. I studied because I loved to. I prayed because I was supposed to. Prayer was not a joy to me. I began studying the Bible. I saw some things about prayer, why we pray, what God says about prayer. Uh, knowledge makes a world of difference. And so I began to see some things about prayer. This is years ago now. And I just decided, I thought, I'm just going to pray. I'm just going to pray until I'm done praying. You know, and I prayed and prayed and prayed and I got, you know, kind of wore out. And so I just, you know, laid before the Lord, just kind of meditated on the things of God, prayed a little bit more. And finally, one time I'm praying long and all of a sudden I just got what I call lost in prayer. You know, I don't mean lost or you just, you just don't know where you are, don't know what you're going to do, can't get home, you know. 
No, I just mean, I just got this place where I was just so in a place with God. I just, I'm loving praying, enjoying praying, don't want to quit praying. I've never been there before. And a lot of Christians never have been. And that's not a criticism, but it's, it's a road sign that says you can get there if you want. Amen. Everybody can go there. You don't have to be called to pray. You just have to be a, a, a believer. And it's a lot easier if you're a Holy Ghost-filled believer because it's better if you can pray it in tongues to get you there. And uh, the one thing I noticed is uh, once you hit this place where prayer is no longer a drudgery, you've, you've gotten over on the edge of something in the presence of God, and all of a sudden, you just don't want to quit praying. That's when you know you're in the Spirit. When you don't want to quit praying, you've gotten over into a good place in God. Yeah. So, so uh, um, one thing I noticed, I've noticed over the years is... is uh, if, if uh, a lot of, I've had people say to me, you know, I just, I've just never been to that place. Well, don't feel bad. Don't, don't condemn yourself. Don't beat yourself up. Just set your faith out there. Then I'm going to, I'm going to find my way into that. And one thing I've noticed, it's like, um, you know, for years, Pastor Janet and I, uh, year for years, we traveled full time on the road. We'd fly into an airport. We'd pick up a car and we'd drive to a church. And sometimes it's an hour away, maybe more, sometimes not that much. But then, you know, we'd get instructions, you know, directions to get to the hotel. And then, uh, then the church would leave us directions to get from the hotel to the church. Nor, usually they were right. One time we ended up in the next state. They forgot one turn. But, um, but anyway. But one thing I notice is, you know, it, you, know you get there, you, you get the instructions from the hotel to the church. And it might be, you know, some back roads or something, but... First time you go, you follow the instructions. If you're in a multi-night meeting, the second night, you carry the instructions, but you got a general idea how to get there, so it's a little easier. By the third night, you don't need the directions anymore because you found the route. It's that way with prayer. If you get into this place where you've stepped over into the presence of God, you've gotten what Paul calls in the Spirit, all right? Once you do that, you know, the first time it's like, oh, that was wonderful, and it, it might be a little while before you can find the map to get back in. But you do that two or three times, and all of a sudden you're going, I know my way. I don't need the map anymore. I know my way. And before long, you can pray. You can be in prayer. You can just be praying, you know, a few minutes to maybe 15 minutes or whatever, and you get back over into this place called in the Spirit. And when you get over there, my goodness, I'll tell you, all heaven will open up, and God will give you unction to pray. And, you know, and sometimes you don't feel anything. You don't, you don't pray by feelings. You pray by unction. Holy Ghost-led prayer. But anyway, i got to find a place to unhook here. We've gone long enough. But, but um, uh, I'll say this, too. Um, I remember hearing about, a, there was, a, again, this, this, uh, this uh, older lady. And she's a prayer, just real given to prayer. Well, she, you know, she, she couldn't go out and do certain things in ministry. She wasn't called to. But at home, she decided one day she's going to put up a map of the, her state where she lived. And there were little towns and villages all over this state of which a lot of them didn't have a full gospel church. And so she just decided her assignment in life was to get led to a particular town on that map, put a marker on it, and she'd pray until somebody planted a church there. And she'd pray and pray and pray until she heard a church got started. Then she'd move the mar- and put another marker. She'd get another town in that state. She prayed churches in all over that state in her lifetime. She prayed churches in all over that state, towns, villages, small towns. She prayed churches in all over. Now, you're going to have a lot of pastors on the day when the rewards are being passed out. You're going to have a lot of pastors that are going to go, Jesus, I tell you, I planted a church in that town. He's going to go, no, you didn't. You didn't. No, and he's going to bring that little old lady over here, and he's going to go, this lady planted churches all over the state. She did all the work. She did all the planning. Shh, you just went and took the spoil, okay? I can give you a reward for that, but this lady's the one that did the work. Prayer and power, always connected. Always connected. Hallelujah. And we haven't got time to get into it tonight. Another time, we'll, we'll get into the book of Acts, and you, you cannot separate the two all through the book of Acts. You can't separate the power of God from prayer, and that means if we really want the power of God to flow, that means that we get to do something about it. You mean I got to pray? No, you don't got to pray. You get to pray. So I just doesn't sound that interesting to me. I understand. I've been there. No criticism, no condemnation. I'm with you. I understand totally. All I'm saying is stick with us. 
Stick with us for a while. One of our assignments, I believe every church ought to be a house of prayer because Jesus said that and he doesn't lie. Every church ought to be a house of prayer. In fact, specifically, it ought to be a house of prayer for all nations. <laughs> that's good. Um, and that's, that is the will of God. But I do know that one of the things that is a mandate on our church, we've known that from before we ever started World Outreach Church. One of the things that's a mandate on this church is to be a, a house of prayer. And that doesn't mean that's all we do. That just means that's the foundation of what we do. And everything God has us do is going to be birthed out of a place of prayer. And so, uh, you know, just trust me in the days to come, there's going to be unction to prayer like we've never seen in here before. And not just us. I mean anybody in the Christian world that wants to jump in can. I just know we're going to jump in. Somebody goes, well, that just sounds boring to me. Well, just kind of just watch and pray. Hide and watch. Do whatever you want to do. I'm just telling you, look out because the Holy Ghost will fall on you and you're going to love prayer just like the rest of us. <laughs> you will be just as radical as I am. Well, maybe not that much. But anyway, let's stand to our feet. We ought to take just the last 10 minutes or so and uh, pray. Somebody goes, wait, just 10 minutes, 10 minutes? Well, if, if the Holy Ghost falls and a spirit of prayer lands on us, then we can go longer. All right? And that's great. But I'll put it this way also. You know, just so we don't have folks saying, well, I can't come because they're going to pray, you know, just too long. And I, you know, I get really bored and all that. You know, you will not be out of order if we start praying and we go a little beyond what we plan to, not necessarily tonight, but sometime. If we go a little further than what we plan to time-wise, if you need to pick up your children, you need somewhere to go, you've got, you're not going to be out of order if you quietly slip out, okay? It's not going to be, oh, lock the doors, there's somebody leaving. You know, we're not going to come after you. So what I'm saying is, don't, don't not get involved because you're not interested in praying as long as some others do. Just give your supply, and when you get done with that, and you go, man, I am so released, then just slip out quietly, and, and that's fine. No condemnation, no legalism, nothing else. We just want to follow the Holy Ghost, all right? So we're going to just take some time. We're going to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. We ought to sing something on our way in. One voice, one sound, one cause, one shout. We come together in the name of the Lord. One heart, we stand. One man, we come together to make way for the King to come. Hallelujah. Oh, we magnify the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Lord, we do magnify you. We glorify you. We lift our voices to you. Father, you said in your word. The fervent, effectual, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. Lord, our praying, our praying, our praying is like that generator that John Lake knew down in South Africa. Our praying is the generator that pulls the power out of heaven and runs it down the lines. So we can sambrekelestika. We lift a voice as this pravatele medostika. And we barandagela, we bring our supply. Father, we pray. Oh, we pray, Father, for souls, 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 souls. Children birthed into the kingdom. As soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Father, we pray for souls. We pray for souls. Thank you, Maskinov, Rimanan, Shkadebratustika. 
Ina Borgoska later Bedish Ganote. Who can say Virginia Mardaste? Oh, Palar Minar Minansk and Ostake, Sotska Damadestake. On the Mandangli, Esgalushke, Ebriato, Oskapalo, Orianska, oh, Malakatar, Vdanska, Lefe, Chepra, Gudustaka, Ina Boroka, Leste, Miranda, Miranda, Kere, Manda Kilis, Satskano. In the Batormia, mature Karastimanandigo, maturing a better good of Fala Barastenica, man, Maliska, Nani, Marasans, Gadista, Pelestico, many sons, many sons, many sons, many sons in the glory, many sons in the glory, Iska Parasans in Inima, Mendigolo for Destapa, Nana Menistico, Manchigalista, Kelestico, rain, 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 rain on us, rain on our nation. Rain on this continent. Rain on Europe. Lord, rain on Europe. Rain across Europe. Rain across Northern Europe. Rain across Eastern Europe. Rain across Western Europe. Rain across Southern Europe. Rain. Oh, that place that's destined to be the seat of the Antichrist. May there be a rain that'll fall and a harvest that'll be brought in and many lives that'll be changed and churches that'll be planted and a mighty apostolic work that shall be wrought. Malagadiska Nani Miranda Kelisto, Subrevechkalitega, Mandadista Kelistako, my 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 Subreska, bigger than what we know, bigger than what we've seen, bigger than what we've dreamed, bigger, bigger, bigger in the last days, bigger in the last days, immense Kananagade, immense, very immense, an immense move. Imanastike, but we ask you, dear Lord, by the Holy Ghost, give us a move of prayer. Breathe on us, breathe on us, breathe on us. Breathe on us. Give us a move of prayer. Iska parastani, ele mandori menanshke nistiko, ene paragans eliste ke dar menanshke nistipo, er beto breve falamarande ke. Mene dus keleni ma, mene dus keleni mana, mene dus peskelos te kelaste ke. Morvi jamra, morvi jamra ke chkeleni manande ke. Marvi dana, melikut skela ne prega sus keleste ke desh ke nistipo. Muparaste ke seska, mor barasara vegele braka deste manande ke. No riba charmins ke leste ko, ma ke liste ke leske do. Ne mara jobre galavar mins ke leste ka, no progo sobre getchelo froga deste ka. Bele vorba dash ke liter mande krena mansan ke liste ke laro. Oh, ma ke sobre ke chive leste ko, i parasukoloste ka. We ask you to invade, invade our church, invade our church with a move of prayer. Interrupt our services anytime, anywhere. Invade our church with a move of prayer. For when Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Births, 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 births. Not just conversions, but births. Mighty power made available. Power, the power of Almighty God. The power to show up in utterance gifts. The power to show up in revelation gifts. The power to show up. Oh, the power gifts. 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 Makasuna Geshkanista Palestine. Special faith, working of miracles, gifts of healings. Power gifts, demonstrations of the Spirit. Inga sabrage, is galabrando, is gabajanglo, nele patanglo, so progo, so vrechke, ne bratska, ne prandes, tankeri, che pravostega. Melagodostego, breathe on us, breathe on us, breathe on us, breathe on us by your spirit, by your power. Breathe on us in this current hour. Breathe on us with an unction to pray. Breathe on us because we have to have it for the upcoming day. Help us, Lord, to get over into the spirit. Into that realm, into that realm, into that realm, my canistakelo, where all heavens available. Into that realm, we can ambashkini pradastakelistako. More out of the flesh and into the spirit. Nyemanistakele, pashkanistako, managidistapela, suvrebedeshtakele, labor, 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 labor. Labor upon the church, labor upon the church. Not labor in the flesh, but labor in the spirit. Knowing your voice, able to hear it. Labor a kelesusa malejganista kelly. 
Lord, invade our young people, invade our youth, invade our young adults, invade our young uh, couples, invade all of us, dear Father. But there's something there, there's something there, there's something there. They'll pick it up and they'll run everywhere. Father, bring out those men and women. They've been, they've been uh, held back in reserve. They know the things of the Spirit. They know the things of prayer. They know the unction of the Holy Ghost. They know how to get there. Lord, bring them, bring them out, of the, out of the prayer closet. And bring them out where they can, can uh, instruct, uh, instruct the next generation how to run and work with your manifestation. Inga prophesala diskeleni menanda. O brekeitskela. Manjeli prophesor moskanistaka. Nante perasur gaste. Nemba du gola chekranini. And now, Father, we just stretch on out. We stretch on out. Lord, you had us. You instructed us to pray for Iowa. You instructed us to pray for New Hampshire. Now, Father, we're going to pray for South Carolina. The will of God for our nation. The will of God for our nation. The will of God for our nation. Where the right individual stands in that place. The highest place of authority in the free world, the highest place of authority on the planet Earth. Lord, you know who it is. You know who it is. Somebody that won't be bought by those that are hiding in those dark places. Someone that can't be bought. Someone that can't be controlled. Someone that can't be coerced. Someone that'll rise up with a backbone like a steel poker and say, I'm not going to be moved by anything but the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Somebody that'll yield to the Spirit. Somebody that'll flow with the Holy Ghost. Somebody that will let encounters come into their life, into their dreams, into their thoughts. Lord, you know who that is. You know who that is. One that'll choose to surround themselves with the right persons, the right cabinet, the right department heads. Father, thank you. Now we ask you, dear Lord, we ask you to invade South Carolina. Invade, 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 invade the primary down there. Lord, it's more important than it looks. It's more important than it looks. Dear Lord, we know, we know whoever stands in that place in the next four years will be able to appoint two to three Supreme Court justices, and that will change the course of this nation, depending on who gets in those places to put on those robes and change or interpret the laws and the constitution of this nation. We'll either get godly or godless. We've had godless. We've dealt with godless. We want godly. Those that stand in that place, wearing those robes. We need people in there that won't think they're supreme. We need people in there that know you're supreme. So Father, it's vital. It's not unimportant to us. It's not unimportant to the nation. It's vital not only for a wartime president, not only for a wartime president, not only for a president that can live in the, in the time of war that's already begun. Light and darkness. Oh, but can some proko say skene? But somebody whose heart will be put into your hand and allow you to turn it. Someone that will allow the church to pray and we can steer this nation through the storms. We can steer this nation through darkness. We can steer this nation through the moral gutter that's been placed into. The church can steer this. We can change the direction of where things go in the church. But Father, give us leaders. Give us leaders. Give us leaders. Father, we don't know. We don't know. We can take some guesses. We can make some estimates. But God, thy will be done on earth the same as it is in heaven. So Father, we pray. We go on ahead and pray concerning South Carolina, concerning the primaries, dear Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you when people get into the place where they vote. Doesn't matter what they thought they were going to do ahead of time. The Holy Ghost will show up. Demons won't show up. Devils won't show up. Darkness won't show up. Don't care what their persuasion is. When they get into the voting booths, the Holy Ghost is going to come on people. They're going to walk in thinking one way, and they're going to walk out having voted another way because it's important. It's vital that this nation be in her place, run her race, finish her course. It affects the course of the world. It's got to be right. We got to get it right this time. We got to get it right this time. 
We're not going to let the world dictate. We're not going to let the devil dictate. We're not going to let popularity or parties dictate. We're going to let the Holy Ghost dictate. So we can Lord, you know what's right. You know what's right. We can't see the future, but that's where you've got great sight. You know what's right. We ask you, Lord, invade that state. Invade that state. Invade that state. Invade that state. You got a lot of people down there. You got a lot of family down there. You got a lot of family. You got a lot of folks. Even if some are hard in their head, their, their heart will yield. So we pray the will and the plan of God on our, on our land. Lord, I honestly, I honestly, I honestly can't say I know the will of God. I honestly can't say I know the will of God. I can honestly say I think I know what it should be, but I can't honestly say I know the will of God. So I'm going to have to do it in the spirit. A new wind to blow, a new wind to blow, a new wind to blow, a new wind to blow in our nation, across our nation, through our nation. A new wind to blow through our nation's capital. A new wind to blow through the state governments. A new wind to blow through city governments. A new wind to blow. A new wind, a new wind, a new wind. When the wind blew in on the day of Pentecost, it changed the course of the world. A new wind. We ask you, Lord, for a new wind. Oh, hallelujah. We need a short one in South Carolina. We're going to need a short one in Florida. We're going to need one all across the states. But then, dear Father, when the counting is all done and the race is be- real race has begun, we're asking you for a wind to blow. My, 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 a mighty wind, a mighty wind, a mighty wind. But it's all for the sake of revival that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God who would have all men to be saved. It's all about revival. It's all about harvest. It's all about souls. We can't reach souls when we've lost our rights and privileges. We can't reach souls when darkness is trying to dominate the church. We can't reach souls like we're supposed to. No. But Lord, we not only need that in the political realm, but God sent something to the spiritual realm. My, my, my. I know, I know, I know, I know. Lord, if we get over there, we're going to be here for a while. I understand that. I understand, I understand, I understand. Yeah, yeah, I know that much. I know that much. I do know that much. And I understand that. I mean, I don't understand it, but I, I, I know it because the Holy Ghost did show it. Uh-huh. As the church goes, so goes the nation. As the church goes, so goes the nation. And that's why the nation's in trouble, because the church backslid. Not all, but much. Backed away from the Holy Ghost. Backed away from the things of the Spirit. Backed away from the supernatural. Backed away even from the wonderful, deep truths of the Word of God concerning redemption, divine healing, gifts of the Spirit. Oh, no, the church backed away. More interested in numbers than power. Church did back away. No, no, Lord, we're not criticizing. We're not pointing fingers. We're not criticizing. Lord, we we don't mean it that way. But the church did make a decision a while back and backed away from the things of the Holy Ghost. And it's cost us. It's cost us dearly. Ah, sin got in the camp. Sin got in the camp. It's all under the rug. It's all under the rug, but the rug's being pulled back. You're getting a broom out. You're going to start sweeping stuff out. Yeah. 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 It's all going to change, though. I know. I know. All going to change. All going to change. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then there's going to be more. Kapatane. Kelly Badangale. Nelly Baduskalestiko. Yeah. And a wave. A wave first of opportunity. A wave of opportunity. 
Ah, a wave of opportunity to make a change. A wave of opportunity to things rearrange. A wave of opportunity. Ooh, but it'll be short. It'll be a short wave. Ah, then afterward, after Pascanini Ministico, but the church will rot. The church will arrive. The church will thrive. The church will believe. The church will pray. The church will do the works in the upcoming day. Holy Ghost churches will thrive in the days to come, and you will remove the middle church. For the sake of the body, for the sake of the harvest. No, Lord, no, the church ought not to glory in that. Church ought not to glory in that. Anything negative like that, it does have a residual effect. There's a ripple effect. So we, we, don't, we don't pray for those things. We just know there's some things about to come. Yeah, and the gates are about to open. Kaimanistika, Zogalistika. Heaven's gates are about to open. Manistikalistika. Not for a bunch of folks to run in, but for a bunch of power to come out. Angels, 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 angels. My, my, my. Angels. My calusos pravaterminafribedusta falakeshtake. Malagiristika. Nah, it'll not be unusual. Not be unusual for angels to be seen not be unusual for angels to be seen no not only in church but out on the highways and the byways not be un it won't be unusual yeah because we got heaven helping us they can't preach it but they can empower us ah the rain will fall the harvest will be brought in the church will go home and then the rest does begin and lord we ask you we ask you we ask you before that evil one steps into his place we ask you dear Lord over in that land for a mighty outpouring of your grace oh not the grace to sin but the grace to deliver from sin not the grace to do wrong but the grace empowering us to do right yeah I know I know I know I know I know I know Manustokolo, I don't bunga shifra, I don't know when, don't know how, don't know anything else, just know, just know, just know. Ah, panganista ke. Because in the spirit you do show. Ah, karanista. You don't tell us all, you just tell us what we need to know. You just tell us enough that we can grab hold and into the future we can boldly go. So now, Father, we lift our hands and we give you praise. To you we gladly take our hands and to you. We bring them up and then we do raise. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, we lift our voice. Praise and thanks. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes, there's a cry going out. You're assembling your ranks. Paskana parastinga day. Igala pranga skalish kanestago. Manavidista peles to kalastai. And I thank you, Lord, for this house. Filled, filled with those gifts, filled with those equippings, filled with those supplies, filled with those powers, filled, dear Father, filled. And I thank you for a house full of people that'll step into their place. Well, let's give him thanks. Let's just give him thanks. And everything by prayer and supplication with, with, with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. So it wouldn't be right for us to let our request be made known and not to give thanks. Oh, so we lift our hands and we give you thanks. We give you thanks. We give you thanks. We give you thanks. Now, Father, about that. About that. Yeah? About that. I'm a school no broker. I'm going to ask you to for the bush. Yeah, you know, talk a day for that. About that, we're going to move to the frala case. I love to go. I know you're the moon. I know you're the profus. I know you're the moon. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. <laughs> Yeah, 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 I should have figured that without having to ask. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, Father, we thank you now. Glory, 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 glory. Mm. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus. Well, one more time, let's lift our hands and give him thanks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, <laughs> glory to God.
Glory to God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Can I tell you how thankful I am for church like this? Or how thankful I am for this church? Hallelujah. My, my, my. Glory to God. I've just known so many places over the years. Ch churches don't have any prayer meetings because nobody comes but the pastor and his wife and half the time she wouldn't go. You know, I just got to have to say thank you for being a church that'll just find out whatever stream the Holy Ghost is running in and, and, and stay in it with us. I'm telling you, there are rewards beyond measure if we'll just follow Him. Hallelujah. If you're willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. So, thank you. Thank you, thank you. And I believe from the heart of the Father. Thank you. Thank you. How many remember a number of years ago when Dr. Mark Barkley was here? I think it was in January. We just, just really just shared the vision of WOC. We're going to get back to that pretty soon. It's time to come back and share the vision again. It's been a couple of years since we've done that. But uh, we're, we're going to get back to that. But um, how many of you remember when, when Dr. Barkley was in here? That morning we had gone through really the four points, of four main points of the vision for WOC. He flew in that afternoon and he came up and he ministered and he got up and he said, now he said, uh, I, I, I actually fell asleep on the plane. He said, I never sleep on the plane. He said, I fell asleep on the plane on the way in and he said, I had a dream and 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 uh, really he went back through and in this dream he said, the Lord, Lord wants you to know he's pleased. He's pleased with you because you haven't you haven't, and he went through the four points of our vision. You haven't given up on the word. You haven't given up on the whole, the move and the flow of the Holy Ghost. You haven't, you haven't given up on the missions and the nations of the world. And you haven't given up on prayer. Now I don't know about you. When God says, I'm pleased with this house because you haven't given up on prayer. And he mixes it in with the word, the spirit, and missions. That just made me real happy. And he's the Lord that changes not. So he's still... It pleases him when we'll take time to talk with him. Process his plan. I've got to get stopped. Let's just stop somewhere along the way here. One more time. Let's, let's give thanks.